Good evening and welcome to Creation Care 101, Session 5. Our topic tonight is Measuring Matters. And I want to begin tonight with uh, a brief prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, it is Valentine's Day and we are reminded of your great love for all of creation. And we are grounded in our love for all that you have given to us to share. We pray, oh God, that our time together will help to deepen our love and our action on behalf of your created world, and that you will lead us in the directions that you would have us go. In your holy name we pray, amen. So I'm so glad you're here. Cindy is with us. She's finishing supper tonight, so we will let her do that. Um, others may be joining us. Uh, we have a bit of a change in our trajectory for our class. I tried to get the final four videos from the Creation Care Collective and they were, they were not willing to send those to us. So we are going to pivot because flexibility is always a part of God's creation. Tonight, we're going to take a look at how we can measure what we're learning in this program and how we can uh, determine the impact of the actions that we are taking. So then we're gonna take a collective decision about how we wanna move forward. But my hope is that together we can form a cohort of congregations here in our Synod to do some measuring through the Cool Congregations Program from Interfaith Power and Light. And this will help us to determine how we're lowering our carbon emissions and to be able to maybe help some other synods and congregations across the United States and the ELCA. Again, we're going to talk about um, measuring matters tonight. So how do we know that what we're doing makes a difference? And why does it really matter? Those are basically the questions we want to address tonight. Well, just as a reminder, this is the memorial to the churchwide assembly that was um, adopted at our Senate assembly in 2022. We reaffirmed the commitment of the church to engage in creation care and advocacy. We reaffirmed the commitment of this church to advocacy and action and set forth these goals of a 50% reduction from 2005 levels to uh, half, 50% by 2030, and then achieving net zero emissions by 2050. And just as a reminder, those goals come from the IPCC, which is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, a group of scientists convened by the United Nations to guide world leaders. So those were those go where those goals came from. And then we also wanted to direct the church-wide organization to um, set the goal of reducing its net, net greenhouse gas pollution 50% by 2030 and that net zero emissions by 2050. So then also at the same time, the Synod Assembly Resolution was to encourage our Synod and congregations to re reduce their emissions in line with that timetable, support investment and education of our synod and congregations about the urgency of the climate crisis. And we've been doing that through our creation care class here and through a variety of other initiatives on, by the synod and the Lutheran to Restoring Creation Mission Table. And then we also adopted this resolution that would encourage congregations and households to decrease their fossil fuel consumption by 10% per year for each of the next three years. So we've set some goals with some measurable uh, achievements, but we have not addressed how we're going to measure them. So that's where tonight comes in. Tonight, we're gonna to talk about the Cool Congregations Program from Interfaith Power and Light. This is a, a national program of different faith communities from across the United States. 
that take seriously their call from our faith to care for our neighbor by caring for our earth. And so this program comes to us through a stewardship lens. And one of the things that I like so much about it is that it gives step-by-step -step guides for congregations of any size to be able to measure their carbon emissions, um, make goals and make changes to reduce those carbon emissions. Um, there are also calculators for households as well as a whole congregation. So people can be engaged um, on a personal level as well as a congregational level. Then if people get really excited, there are certification and challenges available through the program itself. This is one of the quotes I took out of the Cool Congregations material, which I think demonstrates how important it is that we think about measuring and how we demonstrate the changes um, that we're making and the impact that it has. So I'm just gonna read this quote. The Environmental Protection Agency's Energy Star Program estimates that if America's 370,000 congregations cut energy use just 20%, it would save nearly $630 million per year that could be applied to missions. These energy savings would prevent the equivalent reduction in climate pollution of eliminating emissions from 480,000 cars or planting 60,000 trees every year. So we're talking about a very considerable impact that we can be a part of through the Cool Congregations program. So the, the, pro the program has this wonderful startup kit, which has different um, chapters in it that helps us to learn how to form a strong green team, how uh, gives suggestions for projects, some that are under $25 to do and some that are over $25. Um, there are some directions about energy audits and also then how to apply for certification. One of the things that I've learned about in the past couple of weeks from a, um, a pastor here in the Kansas City area is that they were able to change all the lights in their facility to LED lighting. And with business incentives and programs through Evergy, which is the um, electricity company here in the Kansas City area, they were able to do that at no cost. They were able to get um, help through the programs provided by Evergy and then providing their own um, installation. They were able to do that at no cost. And they are interested in helping us see then what a difference that makes in their energy bills. Now, unfortunately, this program that they used is only on the Missouri side, but I've also heard from a congregation in um, the St. Louis area that there are some programs that are available in St. Louis as well. So we're gonna take a look at some of the, um, the possible uh, programs that might be coming up. But first, I want to share with you a little bit more about this startup kit to give you an idea of what might be available to um, you and your congregation. Now, Cindy, can you see the five steps to becoming a cool congregation? Is that coming up on your screen? Yes. Okay, I'm just making sure I'm sharing things correctly. So this is a downloadable kit that gives, um, like I said, different chapters with different ideas about how to implement this in your congregation with some handouts and resources, which I will introduce you to here tonight as well. Um, this was uh, put together by a woman named uh, Sarah Paulos of Iowa Interfaith Power and Light. And so it was someone from the grassroots who was helping her congregation in measuring their impact. So it gives some background on the importance of of why we do this and the effects of climate change, what the benefits are to a congregation. And um, it spells out these uh, steps of learning and planning 
finding ideas, getting help, making improvements, and then the steps for certification and challenges. Then it also talks about this household cool congregations contest, and that might be a way for us to engage more people in this work. So there's a little bit about interfaith power and light if you're not familiar with that. Um, um, but it goes through step by step and really helps congregations learn about why this is important and what we need to do. So here is a graph, for example, that shows the impacts of the rising climate change if we don't do anything over the next few years and how we can act now to mitigate some of those negative effects. There's a, a wonderful section in here about forming a green team. We also have great resources available to us through the Lutherans Restoring Creation website. So those are um, with some Lutheran resources that might be helpful in your congregation. A number of the congregations who are a part of this Creation Care 101 class have already established their own green team or creation care team or are in the process. So I feel like we've already gotten started in this kind of process already. So it gives some tips about um, how to do this. I know LRC has a covenant that can be presented and the church council can vote on it. So it makes it an official ministry of the congregation and really integrates it into the life of the whole uh, ministry of the congregation. There's a section on personal motivations, um, aligning with our own denominational climate statement. And I'll just put in a little plug here that starting next, uh, uh, next week on February 23rd, the Bishop will be hosting a Thursday evening Bible study on the ELCA social statement on the environment. And everyone is welcome to do that. I will include the link for that in the notes that go along with the PowerPoint that will be sent out. But she will be hosting that and anyone is uh, available is welcome to attend. It might be a great thing for your green team to do together. Um, so then there's this information about writing a mission statement. Then these sections about finding ideas. So there's all kinds of really concrete information that can help our congregations um, with ideas for how to impact the lives of their, their congregations. Um, one of the important things we're trying to do through LRC in the Central State Synod also is to build this kind of a network where we can share information with each other and you know, say this congregation in Kansas City that's changed out all their light bulbs. The pastor sent me all this information about how they went about doing it. And we can pass that on to co other congregations. His, his um, point of emphasis to me when, when we talked about it was he said, just call the power company and find out how they can be of help. He said that was a very, they were very helpful at Evergy. Um, they helped them through the process. They helped them find out what kinds of programs were available to help fund it. And so he said, don't be afraid to call the energy department, um, the energy company, and just find out what, what the needs are. They had um, a, an energy audit. It was a kind of a limited energy audit, but again, the power company was the one that helped them do that. So I think um, when we help each other out and give each other tips, we can um, really expand the impact that we're having across the synod. So these are a number of different things. I won't go through it all now, but you can see just what kind of resources are available through this uh, Cool Congregations startup kit. So we've talked about the power, the uh, startup kit. Also, they have calculators so that you can begin to really get a, uh, a sense of how the actions you are taking are making changes in your carbon emissions. 
I was on another webinar today that referenced the um, Inflation Reduction Act. And one of the requirements of that is that there needs to be something in place for congregations to be able to, to set a benchmark for what, where they're starting so that they can um, measure how they're changing. So in order to get any kind of funding through the Inflation Reduction Act, these are the kinds of things that we're going to have to be able to do. So why not start now with the Cool Congregations Program? But what I like about the calculators is they have specific sections for different parts of congregational life and then household life. For example, in the carbon footprint calculator for the congregations, they look at facilities, transportation, food, and procurement. And if you think about the classes that we've already had through this Creation Care 101 class, we've talked a lot about food and procurement in particular. And we've talked about ways to decrease our carbon emissions in those two ways and the effect of household reductions, what that might do as well. I also think it's helpful as we begin to measure to meet congregations where they are. For example, if you are in a congregation that is just overwhelmed by the thought of even looking at um, energy reductions at this point, that's okay. You can start somewhere else. Maybe food reductions and food, um, thinking about the theology of food might be a helpful place to start. I spent some time with my own congregation, Overland Park Lutheran, in a leadership retreat this weekend and presented on the theology of food. And that's the place that they're going to start to think about how are they, what are they serving? How are they serving it? So it gets into procurement as well. How can they reduce plastic, eliminate styrofoam, perhaps um, do some different things to help inspire their congregational members. Um, thinking about eating less meat and eating lower on the food chain. So that's the entry point for that particular congregation. Transportation may or may not be a big issue at your congregation, depending about uh, depending on where you're located and and the kind of distances that people have to travel. But these calculators give you some idea of what might be the best place for your congregation to start. So I'm going to share a little bit about the calculators on this. Um, here for the for example, here is the congregational calculator. And this sample congregation gives you an idea of, of how um, the information is presented when you put in all of your information from your congregation. So um, there's a checklist, which I'll show you here in a minute, um, that helps you to gather the information you need to be able to fill in the calculator and make these. I'll show you the calculator itself if my computer will help me find that. Um, so uh, here we are as it loads up. So it will talk about your location um, your, and then ask you questions about your facilities, about transportation, as it builds that profile for each congregation um, as we had here in this uh, sample one from Blue Sky Church in California. So this is where you save your data, which I'll show you here the cool, here's a checklist that gives you all the information you need so that um, you're, you and your green team can look at all these different parts of your church life on your facilities, going through, um, usually you can get this off the internet, if you go into the account of your congregation, you can get all this information about um, the usage for the facility itself. And then transportation of staff and members, that's gonna be something that you'll just have to gather from the people there. And then, um, then again, food, which we have talked about extensively through one of our sessions and procurement of supplies and that kind of a thing. So there's some great tools, again, 
to help you get started. Cool Congregations is adaptable for any size congregation. There's also an Energy Star congregation, especially for those of you who are really into getting into the nitty gritty. Um, and Cindy might be able to say a little bit about this because her congregation um, did this Energy Star certification several years ago. Um, but they have a workbook, an action workbook for congregations. And um, there's an overview, there's a webinar, there's all kinds of information for Energy Star. Again, um, de depending on which, which direction you wanna go, there's a lot of resources that can be helpful in both of these programs because there's an a lot of overlap in terms of what they're measuring. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint here and see where we are. So we've talked a little bit about calculators. Here's the sample church that we talked about. The, cal the calculator for households, it talks about travel, home, food, and goods and services. I was fortunate to take a class called Living the Change from Lisa Brenskelly down in Houston, Texas. And I have lots of information that she shared um, on how we can lower our individual and household carbon footprints. And so um, those are things that we can share and help educate one another. So the resources that are available for this Cool Congregations program include that checklist that I just referenced, the Energy Star program, that is available through, um, also through Interfaith Power and Light. They have lots of information on that. They have information about carbon offsets, that is planting trees when we can't get down to zero, there are ways we can offset our own carbon emissions. And then there's an upcoming webinar from Interfaith Power and Light on February 21st, and it's called Planning the Energy Future of Your Congregation. And I'll just share with you a little information about that webinar upcoming. The webinar will address the importance of benchmarking or creating a snapshot of your facility's energy use to shape your congregation's plan to cut energy costs and care for our sacred earth. This is the first step to making a plan to take advantage of federal funding for energy and resiliency improvements from the Inflation Reduction Act and the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act that will be available later this year. So if you would like to sign up for that webinar, I will include the link in the notes for tonight's webinar. Also, if you're not able to attend because it is during the day, so that is difficult for some people who work, I will be able to get a recording of that and we'll be willing to share that when that is when that is ready. So just know that that is another resource that's going to be available for us. Any questions so far? I've thrown a lot of information out there. Cindy, any questions or comments or thoughts? No, I think it looks good. Okay. Well, so our next steps are to see if we can find a cohort of congregations from the Central State Synod to pilot this Cool Congregations program. So I'm hoping that we can get volunteer congregations from this class and then also from our March 4th retreat at Hollis Renewal Center. Right now we have 29 people. Um, I don't have the number of congregations that represents, but we have 29 people signed up for that uh, March 4th retreat. And I've had indications from the, the pastor that I mentioned about that had done their lighting changes. They might be willing to help with this, this as a co uh, congregation in this cohort. My own congregation, I'm hoping they might be willing to jump in and be a cool congregation. Um, Jill Gaynor, who is at Creve Corps, she said that they have done some lighting changes. So they would be willing to discuss the possibility of becoming one of these um, um, 
initial pilot congregations. And, and so we're going to see if we can at least get some who are willing to give it a try and, and so that others can learn from our experience. Um, what we could do is we could share monthly our progress on Zoom and we could do more education. Um, I think we just go ahead and use this Zoom spot that we already use for Creation Care 101. We can cover some of the topics that have not been as covered as thoroughly, like transportation and facilities. We could do some more information on that. Lisa Brinskelly has um, offered to help us with resources. So um, she is a very, uh, very helpful person. And I think, Cindy, you've taken several of her classes. So you know what a wealth of information she provides. I also think one of the things I really like about this school congregation is that it, it includes individual households. Um, I think any way we can engage people, not only from a thinking perspective, but also a heart perspective and an action perspective, that's the way we're going to actually make systemic changes and move towards advocacy to change unjust systems. But I do believe that we have to start by helping people better understand themselves, what's important to them and how they want to um, make changes in their own lives. And that will then, I think, inspire changes in congregations and then further in systems. So I think that we encourage people to work on the strategies and the four areas that are feasible for their congregation. Not everybody's going to be able to do all four at the same time, but I think we start where we can and as we begin to do some measuring, we'll be inspired and hopefully inspire others to join us. That was one of the tenets of the Creation Care 101 class as we had started together was that um, individual action does make a, dish, make, um, uh, make a change. And, and it is important and it inspires others. And that as we think about what's good for our neighbor, good for God and good for all of creation, that that's where we really have to find the intersection in this work of um, decreasing our carbon footprint. So, Cindy, any questions or discussions or do you want to volunteer your congregation? Or <laughs> Sure, I do, you know. <laughs> great, great. Uh, I well, imagine anyway, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> and can you say a little bit about your process with the Energy Star back in, was it 218, 2018? Is that when you did it? Well, no, I mean, 2017 is when 20... we were certified, but I started way back in um, 2012. I think the oh, wow. LRC basically was running a program called the Energy Stewards Initiative. Okay that had been piloted the year before. And so they were expanding and mm -hmm. it was supposed to be a two year program. And we basically had monthly, um, you know, calls yeah. to yeah. share information. And sure. so they had great experts to, to talk. And uh -huh. they, they helped us set up, you know, figure out what baseline data you needed to get into Energy Star because you have to set up a profile about yeah, yeah. How, big, how big your building is, what year it was built, you know, do you have a kitchen, how many refrigerators, those mm -hmm. things that you have to think about. And then you typically um, put in two years worth of baseline data to get that benchmark. Okay that you were talking about so okay okay I think we put in our 2010 and 2011 data mm -hmm. to start and the scores run from zero to a hundred and the closer you are to a hundred the better off yeah. you are in terms of saving energy okay and, um I think our starting score was a 37 or a 36 it was, uh -huh. it was down there and by the time we were certified we were up to an 81 wow but, that's amazing but we did a lot of it coincided with our 100th anniversary oh yeah and so we 
our council was working on projects <coughs> in those directions. Uh huh. We put on solar panels. Wow. Um, we replaced. <clears throat> they did some like zoned heating and air conditioning. Mm -hmm. You know, so that you're not heating the whole the whole space right. all the time. Right. <clears throat> And um, they did end up replacing windows because they were the leakiest old aluminum style. I mean, that's that's usually lower down on the list of getting your money back. <clears throat> uh -huh. mm -hmm. But we decided it was worthwhile in our school building. That's great. Um, and we also did an LED light project because we had <clears throat> old fluorescents and the, um, some of them, the, I forget what you call it, were starting to leak, you know, they, yeah. they couldn't be maintained real well. And so, okay. yeah, the, the electric company has incentive programs to make those kind of changes. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a multi-year yeah. And it Energy Star is a very rigorous process. And so I think for some congregations, it might be a little bit more than they want to do. They want to get started perhaps with cool congregations, which is a little bit less rigorous. But I also I don't know enough about the Inflation Reduction Act to know if you, if you have to go through Energy Star. But we'll learn more about that as we as we hear, see the webinars and that kind of a thing. But but I, I don't think that we should stop if we can't be Energy Star certified. I think a lot of us can do a lot of things and smaller congregations that maybe don't have all of those things in place can still make a big impact. I think well, the right, key yeah. is, that, yeah, we just, we have, we've just got to act. And I, I am, I am guilty of not being good at measuring. Um, well, as a so chaplain and all, yeah. As a chaplain in the hospital, we always we, we had to measure our effectiveness, and it's very difficult to put numbers into what we do. But there are some things we can measure in terms of carbon emissions, so we, we need to take advantage of that. Yeah. Well, right. So, I mean, what I was tracking with the Energy Star Portfolio Manager basically was our electricity use and our okay. gas our gas use. Electricity and gas. Okay. Good. I mean, they also have tools to track water, but I didn't keep track of that when I started. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> it could be added. And I think they've now added for, you know, solid waste. Okay. That kind of thing. And I don't track wow. that, but okay. once you yep. have your baseline data, and, you know, then it doesn't take that long. It's to the update, initial. You yeah. Know, I yeah. do it maybe once a quarter. I'll put in three months worth of data, and then your okay your score updates automatically. Wow. Okay. So that you well, that know great. whether yeah. whether you're doing things, you know, because it's hard to figure out. Just because you make changes that that you think are going to increase your score doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean that it goes that way. Right. Right. And uh, you know, and now we're struggling. Again. Again, our well, they EPA actually adjusted the scoring system nationally. Okay, I think they thought everybody had come up so high, so they, I think, when they adjusted, we we went from like an eighty-one to maybe it was a sixty-eight. It dropped that much. Okay. Wow. Okay. And then, so um, but our old, we have an old boiler that's really giving us trouble now. And and we've had the windows open with heat and air conditioning on for ventilation during the oh, pandemic oh, time. Yeah, yeah. So now, now our score is back to 38 to 40. Well, there's always room to grow. So. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's a never ending, it's a never ending challenge. That is for sure. But it's so good to know, you know, there's people like you that have experience that can help others along the way. And 
I was really encouraged to see on the Energy Star site that they have specific things for congregations. And I know that um, at the ELCA level, they're also working with Energy Star to get some more resources for congregations. So um, I think this is where we're at a time that it's ripe for uh, jumping in and taking advantage of these possibilities. And I think taking advantage of some of the momentum that we're building with this class, with some of the resources coming out through the Synod. Um, so I'm excited to see if congregations will jump in. Um, so if you're interested here, those of you who are listening to this video, please let me know that you wanna be a part of it. So moving forward, um, this video and PowerPoint, along with some of the resources I mentioned, will be posted online on the LRC website, and I'll also send those out to everyone. And then if, if everyone's agreeable, we'll go ahead and have our next meeting as scheduled on Tuesday, March 14th at 7 p.m. And maybe at that point, we'll have some other congregations committed and and we'll be able to move forward. Does that sound like an okay thing, Cindy? Sounds good. Okay. So um, I hope everyone, any, any other questions or comments, Cindy, before we close? We're a little bit shorter tonight, but uh, we've covered the information I had hoped to cover. I'm good. Okay. Well, we will go ahead and close with a prayer tonight. Let us pray. Oh God, you call us to act on behalf of all that you have created, human and more than human and all that you hold so dear. We pray, oh God, that our hearts and our love will expand to embrace all the challenges and all the opportunities that are before us. And we pray that um, supporting one another along this journey and with your love and your grace to guide us, that we can be your people of hope and faith and joy in this world of need. We are mindful of those who are in Syria and Turkey as they recover from the earthquake, for the people of Ukraine who are embattled and weary and cold for victims of shootings especially today in Ms. Michigan State and just the need for your love to envelop and to embrace all of us and for us to act with courage on behalf of a world in need in your holy name we pray amen <laughs>